Hi again, and welcome to another 5-minute tip. In this tip, we're going to look at lighting, especially inclusion and exclusion of lighting. My last tip was about cheating physics a little bit. This tip is no different. What I have here is a scene, uh, just some spheres, different colors, a floor object, and a simple spotlight from above. If I render it, it doesn't look too impressive. But this is really plain flat lighting. Now, Cinema 4D has a feature that allows you to include or exclude objects from lighting. At its very simplest implementation, it looks like this. You select the light. It's usually easier if you lock the attribute manager so it doesn't change when you click other things. And then by default, the light has all these tabs, and one of them is Project. Because it's a light, you'd think it means project, as in projection, but it's actually the project, and it's the settings for this light. So what you can do is you can say, okay, this large blue sphere, sphere 8, let's exclude it from the light. And all of a sudden, it doesn't get any light. So that's pretty much how the feature works. You could also say include, and it's the only thing that gets light. This is pretty weird when all we have is one light, but I'll try to show you guys how this could be used. What I could do is, I'm, is I could go from the top view and just create another light really quickly. Target light. So now I have light 1. I'm going to call this pink. As you might have guessed, I'm calling it pink because it's about to become pink. So I'm going to create this pink light. And I'm going to turn on the shaded view from, from, from above so I can sort of see what the pink light is doing. I'm going to move the target so it sort of washes over the front of the area. And we have this nice, intense pink light now. I'm going to turn it up a little bit so that it's just kind of bright. And then I'm going to duplicate it so that we have another light coming from the other direction. And I'm going to call this one blue. So now we have a hideous scene with some pink and blue lighting. Now this might look kind of cool on the floor. If we do a render here, you can see we're getting some really interesting effects right here. But I don't love the way that it makes the spheres all washed out. So one simple fix is to simply exclude the spheres from the lighting provided by pink and blue. So I'm going to lock the pink light. I'm going to drag this entire hierarchy into it. You can see as I did that, you can see the specular highlight vanishes. You can also tweak whether it affects diffuse or specular and all that sort of stuff. So here I can exclude diffuse but not specular, and vice versa. So um, we can then unlock it, select the blue light, lock it, drag this entire hierarchy in. And now we see that the spheres are not being affected by this new lighting at all. So it's almost like we're just lighting the floor. It's important to note that we could have simply put the floor into these lights and said include instead of exclude. But for the purposes of this example, let's just keep going like this. So if I were to render again, you can see now we're kind of getting that effect. The pink light and the blue light are sort of not affecting the spheres very much, but they are affecting the floor. And that's what we wanted. We do have a bit of an imbalance now. The light under the spheres is completely dark and it looks really unnatural. So what you could do is create another light. I'm just going to use a point light. I'm going to bring it to the front a little bit. I'm actually going to put it under the floor. And this light, I'm going to give a slight yellow color. You can see the yellow color sort of taking effect right there and a little bit of a yellow color and down there it may be 55 percent we can render again and we can see now that's sort of affecting the underside of the spheres now this is not a very impressive looking scene but i just wanted to explain that you can use this to sort of tweak the way your lighting looks um, you could also turn off certain attributes but that's just general lighting stuff that has nothing to do with the project tab. 
Now if you had other objects in the scene that you didn't want to be affected by this yellow light, what you could do is the opposite of what we just did. You drag the entire hierarchy of the spheres in. Instead of saying exclude, you say include. So these are going to be included, sort of an inclusive relationship, meaning that if I created a new cube, the cube is not going to be affected. Let me just rotate it so you can see the underneath. It's not going to be affected by that new yellow light that I created. But if I were to select that, if I were to remove the fracture object here from it, the cube actually would be affected. I'd have to change it back. I'd have to change it back to exclude. But the cube is now being affected by that subtle yellow light. Let me turn the intensity up so we can see. So you see the cube and all the spheres are being affected. But I could go to the project tab of the yellow light and say, I only want to include, the minute I choose that option, everything goes dark, the fracture group, at which point that becomes illuminated. So this is a really good way to cheat physics. I use this feature every so often, but whenever I do need to use it, it's a real lifesaver. It lets you just apply a little bit of light to certain areas of your scene, and it lets you really control which objects receive that light. Uh, I found it really useful. It's, again, kind of technical and nerdy, but maybe some of you guys will really appreciate it. Um, so I hope you learned something new, and until next time, see ya.